It's time for another round of Labyrinth Head to Head. This is Legendary Tactics. And I'm the American player. Just taking a look at my hand, there's uh, not really a lot to like. A lot of uh, jihadist events. I'm going to do my best to mitigate some of these and uh, manage them. Schengen visas is of uh, particular uh, interest. There's a few there that are going to place some cells, and I'm not much of a fan of that. Um, Abu Ghraib is one of those, you know, events that can really hammer the American player in the wrong context, and um, and Kashmir isn't great either. So. Um, on the plus side, we do have uh, um, Zawahiri and um, UN Nation building. And, you know, I don't have a regime change uh, in this scenario, so um, it's okay. You know, we're, this is the let's roll scenario. I don't have to begin with a, uh, with a regime change in Afghanistan. Um, I can even use the play the event first and then do the regime change. So that can potentially uh, mitigate that event. So we're okay. Um, obviously we're gonna look for uh, opportunities. I really like the idea of cutting uh, funding. I know that uh, as a player, Cax is driven to keep his funding very high. It uh, does not like playing on a low budget. Um, so yeah, nothing really all that exciting with this hand, a lot of two ops. Um, yeah, so I gotta kind of you know, manage my uh, my play here, manage my plan. And that's really, Schengen visas is the one that uh, can be pretty nasty, especially with the uh, hard posture. Um, Schengen visas can easily flip that around uh, so that you, you've got the uh, global war on terror relations uh, working totally against you uh, just by landing in a couple of Schengen countries, flipping them to soft, which is, you know, obviously the more likely scenario and uh, that will uh, flip it to, to uh, soft posture overall and that'll be tough to uh, to uh, readjust so anyway we'll do a war of ideas obviously the the very first uh, job in uh, let's roll is to get the um, pakistan to at least ally uh, the idea being you can deploy troops there and i got it on the second card had to give up a couple uh, cells in uh, one in uh, Central Asia, one in uh, Afghanistan, where he's already got a bunch of cells. Um, he's just been recruiting and getting a bunch of people on the board, and uh, we'll have to see what he what he does next. So the good news is, um, with Pakistan as an ally, I can protect those WMDs. Uh, I find usually it's not a bad idea uh, to take the troops from Saudi Arabia. Um, there is the Al Jazeera card to keep in mind, and uh, if you can uh, get rid of the Gulf states uh, troops, uh, either probably not back to the track because there's really no advantage in in doing so, but at least moving them elsewhere, maybe into Pakistan, that it protects you against the Al Jazeera card and uh, neutralizes that event. Um, also, I find that it takes a while for the cells to make their way down to Saudi Arabia in most cases. Uh, so it's not a, you know, a, a bad idea necessarily. Um, it's usually my first move is uh, moving Saudi troops into Pakistan to protect those WMDs and give me disruption opportunities. Um, sending troops back to the track, if you, you know, think of it in terms of, oh, that's interesting. Just moving three uh, three cells up to Central Asia, seeing an opportunity there perhaps to uh, do a, a major jihad at some point. Anyway, as I was saying, the uh, if you look at it in terms of regime changes, there's not a heck of a lot of advantage to sending two troops to the track because you can safely take six troops out of the um, off the troop track and still maintain. You're not in overstretch, so. Uh, you can still maintain war footing, which gives you eight cards. Uh, so for me, having four troops on the board is uh, two in two countries. I think that's a pretty good, you know, status quo. Um, not necessarily a lot of reason to um, add more troops, uh, depending on the situation, but certainly um, it's, it's a nice number to have 
um, because it gives, at least in the current state, it does give you nine cards, and uh, really that's where you want to be if, if possible. So you want to have at least as many cards as the jihadist, if not more. So he's just doing more recruiting. Not a bad move, really, in the early game. Get as many cells on the board as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I'm going to look to um, moving the troops from, uh, as I said, from Saudi Arabia to Pakistan. That is my usual move. And But I think if we take the event first and then we are going to do a regime change here. Um, at least it's uh, it's off the, or it's in the discards anyway. So uh, it can come back with a, you know, with a, a, an oil card there. But uh, anyway, we'll do the regime change in Afghanistan. Hopefully it'll go well. And it did okay. Um, we did lose a lot of prestige though. It's always tough when you lose a whole bunch of prestige like that. It can really bog down the, um, you know, the situation. I want to save Zawahiri probably for later on in the turn. Um, I'd love to drop funding just on the last card or the second last card of your, you have your turn because it doesn't give the jihadist any chance to respond, and they can. Um, yeah, so I'll use the nation building here to give me as much of an edge as possible and hey we got it to good regime change over so that was a very positive uh, result and uh, so we're very happy about that um, yeah so uh, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of thinking to do here I mean Pakistan is still open but I'm gonna be sending those guys back to the track likely with the Danish cartoons card um, he's gonna do a couple plots um, at the moment, the important thing was to get rid of the Islamist rule. Now that there's no Islamist rule on the board, it kind of puts the pressure on him as far as uh, recruiting and all that sort of stuff. So um, he uh, he's you know looking to plot though. I know he's uh, he loves to plot um, to get his funding up, but also um, it hurts my prestige in general. So. Um, but that, uh, that UN card was just perfectly timed and I got lucky. So as he got lucky with the two plots here, well, I think uh, it might be time to send the troops home. I'm not so much worried about the fate of Afghanistan. It's only a one resource country and um, it's really not that uh, important to the overall plan. Certainly not in, in, uh, you know, in, this, uh, in this scenario, let's roll. So... All right, so two priorities, uh, sending the troops out of Afghanistan before those plots go off and uh, getting to Pakistan to defend those WMDs. Um, even though Pakistan is a long ways away from uh, becoming IR at that at Islamist rule at this point, I don't think it's a bad idea to get there and defend it. <coughs> So, yeah, just figuring out the best card combo here. It's a bit of a tough, tough call. Um, so we're going to... Oh, we're going to disrupt first, get a prestige out of it. And we do give up a cell in Somalia. Uh, now, a lot of times I actually don't mind playing events like that, which kind of scatter the cells around. Um, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to hold on. It's been a while since I played this game. This commentary is happening uh, about a month or so after we actually played this game. So it's uh, it's very interesting. But I guess I'm just kind of holding, holding the fort. I disrupted some cells. And uh, he did end up worsening governance by one. Um, but at least it didn't cost me any prestige. Uh, the disrupts uh, boosted my prestige, and then I, I basically, uh, the, uh, you know, the prestige didn't change. It came out in the wash after the plots went off. But uh, yeah, you know, it might have been a good idea to just see if I could hang on to uh, Afghanistan uh, in some form or fashion. But now that it's down to fair, I'm much less likely to uh, want to stay there. So. 
Yeah, Kashmir is one of those tricky cards too. You really don't want to let that event happen if you can help it. Um, I'm just uh, looking, I'm figuring he's going to go for a major jihad in Central Asia. It's kind of one of those situations where it's too late to um, really make a difference at this point. You can spend a lot of ops and try and get it to ally and then send in troops and try and hold back. But at this stage of the game, it's not uh, desperate and the ops are better spent setting up your position elsewhere. The, the standard win for the U.S. here is to get uh, more or less a combination of Pakistan, uh, Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, and uh, that sort of sets you up for the, the win. You've got eight resources. Um, if you can pick up Indonesia and then maybe another either Afghanistan or Yemen or Jordan or something like that, uh, then you're you're good to go. But usually the, 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 the scenario typically is built around that core of those countries. And uh, he had, was forced to play the Predator event, which was perfect. It got that sell out of Pakistan, so I've got a little less pressure there. Um, I'm going to be playing, I'm just probably thinking here, the last few cards that I should be playing. Schengen visas, again, that can be dangerous because uh, it sends troops to the, or sends cells to Europe where they can flip the, you know, Global War on Terror uh, marker fairly easily, um, especially if they get wandering around. I, I call it the, uh, you know, the jihadist tour of Europe where basically you spend ops moving around Europe trying to basically switch it to the opposite, you know, side. It's typically in let's roll scenario, you're looking to flip them to soft. So anyway, I'll move to my standard uh, Saudi Arabia to Pakistan. Um, but Schengen visas can put a few cells in, in there to just start that off. And, and uh, you know, you can easily have a global war on terror of negative three um, working against uh, the U.S. Basically, you know, forcing their hand, forcing them to do a, a, a change of posture. And, and that means you can operate, uh, you know, get some, um, you know, get some, uh, you know, <laughs> some, you know, cells cluster together and do a major jihad without worry about uh, regime change so um, and we'll give him that event so he's go probably gonna tour I'm interested where he's gonna pull the cells from I've actually been fairly decent at disrupting him um, I don't think he planned on that I'm um, just looking at the, the, s the situation at the moment um, but uh, yeah, basically, we're just gonna see where where he decides to go. I, you know, he may not may want to keep them concentrated. I'm not sure, but because um, uh, there, there is a bit of a problem when you scatter the cells around. I mean, he's only gonna have three um, cells in the Middle East if he if he uh, sends two of them to the Schengen countries. So it's gonna be a bit uh, a bit challenging. One of the fun things, as well as the U.S. player. And then sometimes it's tough to pull off, um, you know, for an extended period of time. But if you can keep the, um, oh, okay, he got out of Afghanistan, which is good. He did flip the posture, uh, the global war on terror relations uh, to the opposite of where I would like it to be. But um, yeah, but one of the nice things is if you can clear off the board of the Islamist rule, um, it becomes a little bit harder for recruiting to happen. Um, which is which is nice. Um, so I'm gonna send my troops home to make sure I get the extra card. And uh, anyway, I do have to put up with a neutral Pakistan for now, and, and a cell goes there. However, I got my um, troops in there from Saudi Arabia, so I can disrupt at my leisure. And uh, he is not in a position right now to to build up. Um, there's really no areas uh, where he can, I mean, in Central Asia is a bit of a long ways away, um, and uh, the Schengen countries are even further away, so um, Pakistan looks to be pretty safe right now. Um, to be honest, I know um, I've, I've played against other players and against the AI, and they love sending their cells uh, all over the place by air. And while I see the... Oh boy, he had a bit of a tough, uh, tough go there. I see the, you know, kind of the 
advantage in that you can zip around, but I find a lot of cases it's a 50-50 or less chance that a, a given cell is going to make it. And, uh, oh, that's just sweet. He didn't realize he was playing right into my hands there, but I got his funding down to low. Um, that was perfect. So he, so I've got a two-card advantage on him. And, of course, um, I draw some fairly nasty uh, jihadist events. Well, actually, it's not too bad. I just Gaza War is such a pain. But um, I guess at this point, you know, Syria in this uh, in this uh, base game of Labyrinth is really not that big a deal. Uh, in in Awakening and uh, Forever War, Syria plays a much much bigger role. It's actually really interesting to, you know, because it's in a, a big civil war and there's a lot of resources spent in Syria that aren't you know normally spent. Um, if it, the the uh, expansions Awakening and Forever War, the one thing that I really love that they do is they really open up the board. They suddenly make Africa, <clears throat> for example, playable and interesting. They make countries like Syria important, uh, you know, things like that. So you you know, whereas especially in the Let's Roll scenario, you're you're really focused on that core group of you know Saudi Arabia, Gulf states, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia. And then maybe on occasion you get into, um, you know, e you know Egypt or um, you know something like that. So, oh, and he uh, he hit me with that card, and wow, that that actually kind of hurts. <laughs> so, and he's he's gonna flip uh, France and uh, make it even more uh, anti. American and the uh, global war on terror sentiment. So anyway, we'll have to see what we can do here. Gaza war is really, that's the real pain in this one. Um, that card could potentially help me with um, with uh, adjusting Benelux's uh, posture and get me back to something more of a neutral stance in the uh, global war on terror. Um, but I'm just going to do a prestige roll and see if I can or sorry, a posture roll and see if I can get a uh, country to see things my way. Because if I can flip one of those uh, Schengen countries, then I will be in good shape. Um, overall, I can at least be at neutral. And I've said in the other videos that I, I actually don't mind having my the global war on terror relations at zero. Because that way it doesn't matter what posture I am. <clears throat> doesn't, you know, I don't have to fight it all the way to, th you know, three on on my side of the spectrum um, you know I'm happy with a zero because I can do what I need to do and um, you know I don't have to spend a lot more ops on wars of ideas to get people to see things my way and um, it's actually not a bad thing <clears throat> and he's doing some traveling he really wants that uh, that jihad and uh, I don't blame him he, he needs a base to recruit from because he's kind of stuck right now he's just uh, you know, he can uh, recruit in Central Asia, but it's not automatic. So he's going to take the event there. And he does have some cells. Oh, and there's India's on my side of things, so that's good. Um, I've got a few cards. Um, like Euro, Euro Islam, as I said, is good for shifting Benelux's posture, but I'm more interested in the funding cut. So if he starts plotting like crazy, as I'm anticipating him to do, um, we're going to see if we can't just disrupt him. Build up my prestige a bit because I could sure use it. And um, yeah, we'll just have to see. Uh, it's a, that can be a tricky event, XKGB. It's uh, not the end of the world, but man, it can be it can be a bit of a challenge. So we'll just disrupt those guys right out of uh, Pakistan, pick up a couple prestige in the process. Um, I do have to allow him to place themselves in Indonesia but uh, that's I think for now that's uh, far enough away from everyone else that it's not uh, not a big deal at this stage you have to be careful though sometimes you can do moves like that and they kind of give them a bit of a base to build from and uh, they can surprise you sometimes you get a few they do a couple cards recruit some guys suddenly they're in major jihad position and and uh, it's it's you you got to scramble, but um, I think right now he's just focused on uh, Central Asia and getting that to 
some level of Islamist rule, but it, it seems like he doesn't have the cards to do it. I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. It seems like he's uh, he just doesn't have the the resources. So he plotted in uh, Pakistan and missed. Um, so I think uh, disrupting him out of there would be a wise move. Um, so we'll get him out of there now that he's exposed. Now, <clears throat> it does kind of uh, hurt me in the sense of uh, shifting things, um, shifting Central Asia or whatever, but that's fine. Um, I'm not sure which one he's going to choose here, but um, but Central Asia, I'm kind of seeing as a lost cause right now. I've got my troops poised in the, on the troop track, ready to do a regime change as soon as uh, things look more favorable. I'll, I'll do that when I once I get a chance to see my next hand. I obviously want to get nine cards. Um, I don't want to blow, um, you know, three ops on on that. Um, yeah, we'll just try and save Gaza War for last, and then that means we at least the discard part of it is. You know, mitigated and the prestige loss we'll just have to live with. There's not much you can do about that. Um, you know, I've been able to recover some some prestige. I've got it up to six, which is, you know, okay. It's, you know, it's neutral at least. Um, it'll be a bit annoying to lose that prestige. Um, you know, when I play Gaza War for the ops, but I do also have the opportunity to drop it. But if I'm not discarding a card, um, I think two ops could be used to uh, some decent effect here um, so we'll uh, we'll see what his next move is he's um, he's just got the one card he forced me to discard the one so I'm just waiting but I'm just you know counting on that uh, negative uh, funding I think that'll be uh, enough to make him swear under his breath because um, uh, it's it can be very frustrating to play as the uh, as a jihadist player with no funding, and especially when you have to play cards like Special Forces. Um, he's really trying to flip the world against me, but it's not, not turning out the way he'd hoped. And uh, so I'm gonna be able to take a guy out. And I think uh, Indonesia's a perfect target. Um, now we'll hit him with this, drop his funding, um, which is good. And, uh, We'll be thinking about this one as far as the best use. Better to discard it, or better to take the two ops. Well, we'll take the War of Ideas. It is only negative one prestige, so let's try and get uh, Pakistan on side, and they do, so that's totally worth it. I don't mind, uh, and I give him the funding, which he then loses, um, so that's totally, totally fine. And more, wow, more jihadi events. Now there's Al Jazeera, I mentioned that event earlier. Nothing, nothing really amazing. I'm tempted though to play Martyrdom Operation early because with his cells clustered in Central Asia, it's actually um, gonna hurt him because he needs that extra cell. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, he's probably gonna jump into a major jihad, you know, first card, first uh, opportunity because he really needs the recruiting center, but um, I'll keep that in mind. It's it, Thailand, I, I'm not really worried about Worst case scenario goes to a soft posture, and I can live with that. Um, so I think we're we're in okay shape. Foreign fighters, I got to mitigate that one. I think that's the main one. Um, Al Jazeera can potentially mitigate uh, by moving the troops to either uh, probably to Afghanistan. If I decide that would be a good idea. Um, you know, because I, you know, it just, it's annoying to have it shift um, Saudi Arabia or neighbor to uh, towards adversary. It just takes time, and war of ideas are so inefficient. Sometimes you burn so many cards, uh, just trying to get some positive effect at all, and it's really it can be quite annoying. So, um, the door to, to of uh, it jihad was closed. Those ones can be usually mitigated, um, just timing the card. Um, cards like Libyan, WMD, oh, he's going to play 
for uh, Major Jihad and looks like he missed it. It'll even do it hard. Um, but uh, anyway, as I was saying, you know, cards like Libyan MD, um, I don't know, they're just not that, you know, not really that impactful, certainly in the let's roll scenario. Um, actually, if you do play, if you do get a game going to the second or third deck, the, the rest of the board does eventually open up, I find. Um, it's actually really neat if you do have a game that goes into the third deck, because a lot of uh, events have been removed over the course of the first two uh, decks. So you're, you're left with cards that are really geared towards different parts of the board that maybe you weren't uh, anticipating. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something that's, you know, it's actually a really, you know, good, uh, good thing. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna play to get uh, to get out of Gulf states to allow me to play um, Al Jazeera at a future point. I don't have to worry about the foreign fighters because there's no regime change. So, um, but I'm. Just want to get that out of my hand, just in case regime change becomes a necessity at a later point. Um, I find any of those cards, which you know you find are negative events, if there's a regime change, if you can get rid of them early, you never know how the game can shift over the course of a turn, and you may suddenly need to do a regime change, and you don't want to be using one of those cards uh, after that happens, because that can really penalize you. Um, other than that, yeah, like cards like Fatwa, um, really tough to play. I mean, uh, you know, it's unless you have like something where you're really, I don't know, you're the same with Tora Bora as well. I find that the 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 rolling prestige can be a huge help. Um, drawing a card can be a huge help. Oh, and he's got a bunch of cells in Afghanistan. He's kind of scrambling here. Um, but uh, yeah, there's cards like Fatwa, I never know, and, and even Torabor. I, I, sometimes they're, they're, but they're always such a mixed bag. I can never really feel totally comfortable playing it. Um, it can be, you know, disastrous. And, uh, but it also can be great, you know, and certainly if you've got prestige, uh, if your prestige is in the toilet, then hey, why not? Yeah, you might as well uh, roll for prestige and see what you get, and you get a card out of it, and you remove two cells, etc. So, but this is yeah, Fatu. I've never know what to do with that card because, you know, if I hand him a three ops card, even if it's a like Libyan Libyan WMD, and I get a one ops card back, where's the advantage? The only thing I can think of is, you know, obviously if you have uh, an event of yours, like if I was down to Fatwa and Kemalist Republic, hey, maybe maybe it'd be worth doing because, uh, you know, that way, it, if he hasn't used his first plot, Kemalist Republic's going to hit and et cetera, et cetera. But it's just so situational. That's what I just cannot get, out, get over. It's just, uh, I just find the event tough to play on a regular basis. Um, yeah, I think I used to play Kemalist Republic a lot for the event, um, but I find that generally speaking, especially in the Let's Rule scenario, Turkey just seems so far away and without any sort of immediate neighbors, you can't, it's really hard to get any sort of daisy chaining going with the good countries. Like Gulf States is obviously the rock in uh, Let's Roll and, and in the base game in general. Um, you know, it's a very stable kind of spot and you can really um, build your game around that. And in fact, a lot of times you want to just get Gulf States to good and then just expand outwards from there. But Turkey is so far away. You have to get through Iraq and Iraq is an adversary typically. So you got to go Saudi Arabia, then Jordan, then Syria, then Turkey. Like it just is, is just too far away. So the Kemalist Republic is a card that I've stopped really using for the event. It's nice to get another fair ally on the board, but it's just too far away. Unless there's some activity going on up there or they, you know, through some bizarre, you know, gameplay, the jihadist got to Turkey and 
flipped it to Islamist rule. Hey, that's an amazing card. That's their that's the uh, jihadist nightmare card. Is Kemalist Republic because you could totally undo all their work. But at least in this scenario, you're not going to see that very often. So you might as well just you know let it go. And uh, he's pondering definitely. He's, uh, he's managed to land a a plot in Afghanistan, which. Again, I'm not super worried about the Al Jazeera card is, is out of the deck, so I can just go right back to Gulf States and escape the prestige loss. Um, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I'd really like to time the martyrdom operation. Th again, that card can be can actually hurt the jihadist player if you if you play it right. If they happen to have all their cells in an Islamist rule country, or if they're uh, in a country like. Um, like Central Asia, like in, where there it's a poor adversary, there's literally no advantage to those plots going off. So at the moment, the risk is um, in Afghanistan. So um, you know, obviously, if uh, if the um, oh, he tried to do a jihad there, but um, obviously, if um, oh, he's really whittled down. That's good. Um, you know, but but obviously, if uh, if there's no effect, um, martyrdom operations is great. Like this is, I think yes, he's got three cells on the board, one in Thailand. This is a perfect opportunity to play martyrdom. Let him have the event. Like let's alert. You know, like let him. Um, you know, set up two more plots. I want to keep his funding low. I don't want to give him too much uh, too much hope and give him some some plots to you know. But uh, if I play that to alert the plot, at least it, it alerts that plot, gets that out of the way, and then he is going to um, have to either put two plots in uh, Central Asia to no effect, or into Thailand, where the best he can hope for is flipping Thailand to soft posture. But with the global war on terror, uh, you have relations at, at two right now, it honestly doesn't matter if it flips. Um, I still get to, you know, basically do what I do, um, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, the rest of the cards I'm, I've got here, yeah, nothing too interesting or spectacular. My prestige is at eight right now, which is uh, solid. I've got a plus one on my War of Ideas, so I, in general, I think that's a good time for the American player to start moving. You don't need to get it to high prestige if you can, great, but plus one on on a on a roll. It's going to get you to, um, you know, on a five or six, you're going to get a country to a good on a given roll. And if you roll a four, you know, with the plus one, you get aid. So, you know, you can, um, you know, you can certainly, um, yeah, just keep his funding down. He went for Thailand. I'm not going to block both of them, I don't think. But, um, soft which is fine that's all right so his funding is still in jeopardy which is the important thing but uh, yeah I think that uh, the game is you know he's down to two cells I, I, it's just crazy I don't know you know he's trying he's got to recruit and he misses so that's painful and again this is why he's got to get uh, an Islamist rule you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do a regime change, so he's got to get a, uh, an Islamist rule uh, going. And let's just, uh, you know, with plus one, as I was saying, like, that's good enough. Get it to now. We're in good shape. So we got Gulf states uh, to good. That means with a plus one on the um, War of Ideas, we're on neighboring countries. Uh, we're looking at, um, you know, basically a 50-50 to improve it to good and uh, you know basically better than that what's it, like 66 percent chance of improving it from poor to fair so um, we are in good shape ah fata that is another tough card if you're not set up properly and that card comes out oh my gosh like he could just swarm pakistan and there's nothing you can do and it is one of the more frustrating events in the game because until you get the event that neutralizes it, it is just uh, just a pain. So that one has to be has to be mitigated. 
Um, intriguingly, there's martyrdom operation as well, so we can hit him maybe down to one cell. And unfortunately, I can't get in there. Uh, it'd be great to do a, a martyrdom operation predator combo and game over if he uh, doesn't get more cells on the board. Um, but uh, and I've started my steamroll, so whether I, I take out all of his cells or um, you know I just start building out from Gulf states, we're in we're in pretty good shape. Again, we've got uh, Bin Laden, so we can hammer his funding if necessary. And, uh, oh, he got a WMD, so that does change the game a little bit. I had to double check that, <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's not good. That changes the nature of things a little bit, but I still think he's still got to make it all the way into the U.S., and Clean Operatives has uh, already gone past, so... Um, He's, unless he gets, uh, unless he takes an oil price spike and draws it back, which would be a smart move. Um, you know, we need to get uh, Nest or something going as soon as possible. So, um, but for now, uh, we'll just have to play the hand we've been given. In uh, the base game, there's a lot of events surrounding Iraq, and I know obviously that was a, uh, you know, a big deal right at that at that time. Um, in a let's roll scenario, like to hit the conditions that will allow you to play those event cards, yeah, just they're not that common uh, that you get those conditions right so that you can actually use uh, the events. And you know, when you glance at the events, they're honestly not that amazing, and like they're okay, but you know, given the setup that might have to be involved if you wanted any of these to actually happen. Um, it just seems to be a lot of ops and a lot of time and resources kind of wasted on a in a situation you really don't need you don't need a rack to succeed uh, and to win in this uh, in this scenario just I mean obviously if you can um, if you can get it too good I mean amazing but it's it's a kind of a tough nut to crack especially if it's not uh, Islamist rule and uh, He's really taking his time. Um, Libyan Deal is one of those cards, again, like I remember playing one d game where we made it to the third deck and it was actually a really good card to have because it came into play, uh, but only because so many cards had been culled from the deck and the board had, state had evolved to the point where Africa became actually relevant. Um, you know, so it's not much in a, in a one deck game or, or um, well, you're in the first deck, eh, not that useful. Um, yeah, and the other ones are just kind of, well, just kind of nasty events. So, <laughs> but uh, there's no way I can play Fata. It's just, um, it's just too tough to to mitigate. I mean, I think a smart jihadi player, if if Pakistan is under Fata, that's you just do whatever you got to do to get cells in there, and you don't worry about anything else. Um, because that will be, um, you know, when you pick up three WMDs, you can do a lot of damage with those, and it's pretty tough for um, the U.S. to to mitigate them. I mean, imagine if you have multiple WMDs and end up with clean clean operatives and martyrdom operation in the U.S. It's game over, <laughs> pretty much. Especially if you time the plots to later in the hand. Um, man, as a U.S. player, you'd have to have two three ops cards on hand all the time, and you know, no exceptions. <laughs> so, and there may be times where that's just not possible. So it uh, definitely puts the game in in the jihadists' uh, hands if he can get some cells there. But uh, yeah, uh, he's uh, Cax is really thinking about this. So he's making me stretch a bit here for commentary, um, but uh, but overall though I'm I'm pretty happy with my my board position. Um, you know, okay, yes, you got a WMD, uh, Lebanon War. That's uh, another one of those annoying ones where I have to throw away a card, but that's fine. I get rid of a one-op card. I'll take a prestige hit. It doesn't take me down to uh, medium, and. Uh, He's going to go to Turkey, which I'm totally fine with. I have no problem with these cells being scattered all over. Because until, the, until they cluster, they can't do much. Because um, it's when they cluster, that's when I get worried. 
Um, and uh, so far, we're just going to keep rolling on our more of ideas. We just, there goes Pakistan. Afghanistan could be next. Let's see here if we can get it to good. It's 50 50 at this point, so um, it's all good. So that was a very good turn, and the steamroller is beginning to work. Um, 12 resources can be tough to get to. Um, obviously, Saudi Arabia is going to be my next uh, target, but, um, you know, after that, Indonesia, I guess, and that will be the game. So um, we can, with a couple of lucky rolls, we could get Saudi Arabia to uh, good in one turn, and then it's just a matter of time. That'll put the pressure on him, especially since he's only, since he's a low funding, three cells on the board, scattered to the winds. Um, there's really not much going on. And uh, unless he has some crazy good events, it's going to be very tough to come back from this. Um, he's going to have to take some risks. And um, I happen to have two out of the three uh, countries that he really needs to, you know, I've got troops there. So even just wandering in, I can play two one-ops cards and and uh, erase erase a lot of his two cells there. So he's really got to, you know, think about this. Oh, there's <laughs> there's the Pakistani offensive card, which would have helped with... Uh, oh, he's going to do some traveling. That would have helped with, uh, you know... If I'd known that was there, I could have played Fata safely. But anyway, <laughs> we, will, we, won't, uh, we won't talk about it. And, uh, oh, he's going to... Oh, going to give me the opportunity to discard it. That's great. Okay, well, see you later. I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm not upset at all by that. Now, he did lower my prestige, but um, I'm okay uh, with that. And I'm wondering about that martyrdom operation. Maybe if... Uh, be a good idea to maybe use it before he gets to the US because I'm sure it seems like he's going just for that play like he's I don't know where he's at he's not um, trying to recruit so I don't know I may have really just demoralized him I don't know if he's if he's firing on all cylinders here because um, he's leaving himself in a pretty vulnerable spot oh can't believe I missed it but I got eight so we're good and he's going to have to choose between Italy and uh, Russia. And really, it doesn't matter. Either one's the same as far as he's concerned. Um, I guess go for uh, for Russia. You know, get a slightly better chance of turning it soft. I, get, I don't know. No, I guess not. So it doesn't really matter. Either one's fine. Um, but he's just down to two cells. Yeah, he went with Russia. So that's fine. He'll get a bit of a funding boost, but at least I got it out of the way, so I'm not dealing with it as, as he suddenly gets into the U.S. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's in real trouble. I don't. I just don't see it. I, I can't see his hand, but he just seems really demoralized. So we'll just keep plugging away on our war of ideas and work on Saudi Arabia. Good, it's, it's fair. And we let the plot go, and... Uh, and he gets some funding. Russia stays hard, so it doesn't really affect me one way or the other. I've got great ops. I'm ready to drop the Bin Laden uh, card on him. Um, he could play two or three ops cards and recruit potentially up to six guys, but he's got nowhere to place them, really. He's got uh, he's got to recruit in Russia or Italy because he's wandered out of uh, Central Asia. There's no cadre there. Uh, I don't see any other cadres, so... I don't know. I have no idea what his play is. I mean, it's obvious. Obvious he wants to get to the U.S., but I don't know, man. That's uh, you know, I, I can disrupt him out of there pretty quickly and easily. So I don't know what, what he's thinking exactly. And I can drop his funding like a stone, which uh, which is something that's good to keep in my back pocket. I may have to give up a uh, seller or something in. Uh, He's going to get a plot. All right. Well, I've held on to my three ops cards here, so let us see. Just scanning for KSM. So, 
Yeah, that's uh, all right. Well, that could be the WMD. Maybe he's gambling on. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's gambling on uh, there being. Uh, I have no three ops cards in hand. I mean, it's fair gamble. Let's see. No, nope, it's just plot three. <laughs> he's bluffing. Um, and I did have to give up that event, which isn't great. He gets a couple more cells on the board. I lose a bit of prestige. Um, but I'm definitely going to hammer him on the funding and boost my prestige uh, up a little bit with that. Uh, we got Bin Laden, which is, the, which is the important thing. But there's still that cell in the U.S. And uh, so, you know, he's still working with four cells. Um, again, I love seeing them scattered like that. They really are ineffective. I mean, he can do some plotting maybe and maybe get lucky. Um, and he rolls and I don't know what happened to that event, but anyway, I'm just going to drop that card. So i get another nine cards. Predators there. That's great. Oil price spike. Perfect. Um, biometrics. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so what card do I pull here? Because, huh, I'm wondering which would be the best one because uh, there's some great options. Maybe KSM, that's always a good one to have in hand um, because you get more cards and, um, you know, if there's any plots anywhere, they, uh, um, if he decides to plot anywhere, then we're, we'll be laughing. So we don't have to decide now, luckily, but we'll hang on to oil price spike and see see what uh, we get of it um, yeah biometrics I find again like unless you're playing against a player that likes to fly around a lot I mean having the non-adjacent travel thing uh, just as a mild inconvenience I guess if the board state is set up a certain way it, it's not a bad thing um, if the board's uh you know, you know, if you, if if you're really looking to hamper movement, um, it can it can work if it's played early enough in the turn, um, and the conditions are right. You know, it can it can certainly block um, some potential uh, movement and uh, limit them. But I find with the uh, in many cases, you know, I don't play many times with uh, people or whatever that do non-adjacent travel. It's just too risky, especially flying into anything other than poor you're you're basically gonna lose on average half to you know 84 percent of your cells just by doing that depending on the governance and that's just too risky i think you just got to stay you know it takes more time but you just got to stay more local and just move more uh one by one and try and get to, uh, through events and through uh, recruiting and so forth, just try and get a cluster of cells together to get your next Islamist rule. And he tries some plots and misses both, but those were that was pretty extreme odds here. So now I'm really thinking he's, he's got five cells. I've got the predator in hand, so let's do a disrupt here, and that's that's an easy decision that boosts me to seven. Gets me back into a good spot, and let's just get you uh, get him out of Afghanistan as well. So now we're up to eight, and he's down to t three cells. There's a, that cell in Italy, and in Indonesia. So yeah, it's good. It's just gonna be. Yeah, I just don't know how he's gonna pull this out. He's really seemed to have lost his mojo, and uh, at the moment. Um, yeah, he's gonna move to the Philippines. Okay, well, it's backdoor to the U.S. And he's got the global war on terror's relations to zero, which is fine by me. But um, yeah, I guess he's just looking to make a run for the U.S. border. Um, I I can't see his hand, but maybe he's just got some really poor ops hands, and there's nothing he can do. So this is an easy choice. Um, basically just disrupt disrupt and uh, get them out of the US since I'm in hard posture I get to disrupt two at a time and I'm just gonna I want to keep the the ops so I'm gonna, I can't use the predator anyway because his last cell is sitting in Italy or sorry in France so he's uh, 
down to one cell. Wow. And talk about, a, I mean, the recruiting opportunities in the Schengen countries are pretty poor. So what's he doing? Oh, it's just, wow. Desperation move. Unless he's got some sort of martyrdom operation. But with KSM just sitting in wait, it's just a matter of, I, I hope he plots. If he's got some sort of card. I can't think of one offhand that he might have. He's thinking about it, so I don't think he's got anything that's immediately dangerous. But uh, yeah, with uh, oil price spike in hand, he's he's going to be in rough shape. Oh, now he's recruiting to the U.S. <laughs> Bizarre. I've never really seen him play this way. That's game. I can disrupt him out of there, and that is all she wrote. What a bizarre ending. I just I was like wandering around in the wilderness. And uh, just, I don't know, just <laughs> like he lost all hope and was just, you know, hoping on an off chance he'd get a get a, a, a win by some sheer force of luck. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this game and I hope I was able to share some strategies with you that, uh, that help. Uh, this is Nato from uh, Legendary Tactics. Please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.